Frequency am I on? There we go. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning on the first Sunday of the liturgical year. I could say Happy New Year as it's the first Sunday in Advent. I'm glad you could worship with us on this celebration of the coming of Christ. First Sunday in Advent. I want to begin with a little trivia this morning. Um, uh, most people, when they think about the, the church and they think about church history, the, the ancient church was grandma's church, right, uh, 70, 80 years ago. Unfortunately, pastors, they, they get this training in 2,000 years of church history and 4,000 years of Bible history and all these sort of things. Um, and one of the, the trivia facts that I want to give you this morning, as it's Advent, and in the past, Advent was a penitential season, um, so it would have been appropriate for us to kneel a lot, is that the, the most ancient uh, prayer posture, the most ancient uh, posture for worship was standing. And when we come to those slides there, you see the little man with his hands outstretched. So that's the orange posture of prayer. We lift up our praise and we lift up our prayers to God with such, such a posture of standing. Uh, the other posture, of course, in this penitential season, although Advent isn't recognized as a penitential season much anymore, is kneeling, where we, we come and we, we kneel before a lord or a ruler or a king. Um, it's really only in the last 600 years, I know you go, 600 years, that's like forever. Well, there's been 14 centuries in which the church stood for worship. It's only been in the last 400 years that people have been able to sit. Churches weren't built with pews. The most ancient churches were just a bare floor. And people stood or they knelt. Um, pews were introduced in the Middle Ages, in the late Middle Ages. Um, and so your grandma grew up in a church with pews. Um, but now we ask you to stand at certain points and sit at other points. And because we're Lutheran, we wouldn't want to kneel. But kneeling is appropriate as well. Um, and we stand as a sign of respect. We stand as a sign of celebration. We are God's risen people, and so we arise. Having said all that, this was a long prelude to saying this right now. No one has to stand. Feel free to sit as you need to. Uh, if you're unable to stand, don't stand. It's okay. Uh, but I wanted to explain those kind of postures and the things that, that we should think about as we stand. We are risen people, raised by Christ. We are people who celebrate, so we stand in celebration. All right, first Sunday of Advent, we also get to light some extra candles. Um, we, have, we have an acolyte this morning. Judy is serving as acolyte. We thought we'd have another acolyte with Judy as well. Judy's going to bring some light to our candle, and I invite you to stand as you're able for the lighting of the Advent wreath. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe. You call all nations to walk in your light and to seek your ways of justice and peace. For the night is past and the dawn of your coming is near. Bless us as we light the first candle of this wreath. Rouse us from sleep that we may be ready to greet our Lord when he comes and welcome him into our hearts and homes. For he is our light and our salvation. Blessed be God forever. Amen. We sing together, shout to the north.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who comes to wake us from sleep, who leads us into the light of grace. Amen. Let us prepare the way of the Lord by confessing our sin against God and neighbor. God of all time, we confess that we have not prepared for your merciful reign upon us. We ignore our neighbors in need and fail in the labor of justice and peace. In your mercy, forgive us. Grant us wisdom to welcome your light and to seek the things that will endure until Christ comes again in glory. Amen. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. In Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven, and all things are made new. Rejoice in this good news. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. <laughs> Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, save us from the threatening dangers of our sins and enlighten our walk in the way of your salvation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our musical offering. The question was raised as my conscience fell, a silly little lie. It didn't mean much, but it lingers still in the corners of my mind. Till you call me to walk on the edge of this world, to spread my dreams and fly. But the future's so far, my heart is so frail, I think I'd rather stay inside. But you love me anyway It's like nothing in life That I've ever known Yes, you love me anyway Oh, Lord, how you love me How you love me It took more than strength To simply be still to seek but never find All the reasons we change The reasons I doubt And why do loved ones have to die But you love me anyway It's 
like nothing in life that I've ever known. Yes, you love me anyway. Oh, Lord, how you love me. But you love me anyway. I am the sweat from your brow. But you love me anyway. I am the nail in your wrist. But you love me anyway. I am Judas's kiss. But you love me. to be spilled on this earth-shaking ground. And I turned away with a smile on my face, with this sin in my heart, trying to bury your grace. And alone in the night, I still called out to you, so ashamed of my life, my life, my life. like nothing in life that I've never known. Yes, you love me anyway. Oh, Lord, how you love me. presented in Isaiah focuses on a future day when God establishes a universal reign of peace. Divine, divine decisions will make war obsolete. The worshiping community responds, let us walk in that light of the Lord now. In the second reading from Romans, Paul compares the advent of Christ to the coming of dawn. We live our lives today in the light of Christ coming in the future. We hear the word. first reading is from Isaiah chapter 2 verses 1 through 5. The word that Isaiah son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem, in days to come the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many peoples shall come and say, come let us go up to the mountain of the Lord to the house of God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that he may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and shall tribute for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. A house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord, the word of the Lord. Let us read uh, Psalm responsibly. I was glad when they said to me, let us go out of the house of the Lord. Now our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is at unity with itself. To which the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, in the assembly of Israel, to praise the name of the Lord. For there are the thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper with the love you. Peace within your walls and quietness within your towers. For the sake of my kindred and companions, I pray for your prosperity. 
because of the because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek to do you good. The second reading is from Romans 13, 11 through 14. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake up from sleep, for salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in botchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealously. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The word of the Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, About that day and hour no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away so too will be the coming of the Son of Man. The two will be in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. One of the wonders, one of the blessings, perhaps one of the burdens with which God has created us is the ability for us to imagine things other than they are. When trials and tribulations come upon us, when disease affects our bodies or the bodies of loved ones around us, when war and famine happens in the world around us, we can imagine it otherwise. We can imagine it being right where there is no disease and no death and no war and no destruction and all have what they need and all are whole. Both a blessing and a burden, is it not? If we could never imagine such a thing, we would just be content with our lot the way it is. But we who are human beings created in the image of God. And even more so, we who are Christians who look forward to the coming, the full realization of the kingdom of God, are blessed with this burden. But the good news, the gospel message that is proclaimed to you week after week, points to the fulfillment of all those hopes and promises that you hold dear, even in the midst of your sorrows and your loss and your troubles and your trials. Even today, this first Sunday of Advent, Advent, a word that means coming, we find ourselves looking ahead to the fulfillment of God's promises. 
the coming of Christ again, and the full realization, the full manifestation of God's kingdom for us, for you and I. The word of the day is parousia. It's a Greek word that means presence. Just a simple kind of Greek word. So now you know the Greek. You go away from church and say, I learned some Greek this morning. But parousia has come to have a theological meaning of the second coming of Jesus. And always on the first Sunday in Advent, we have readings that speak about the second coming, the parousia of Christ. <laughs> The emphasis in today's reading is that no one knows when it's going to happen. Neither the angels of heaven nor the Son himself know when the day or hour is to happen. But it will happen. Jesus makes it clear in his stories. Something is going to happen. The fulfillment of the kingdom is promised and will be. The parousia is on the horizon. And isn't that the, the metaphor that Paul lifts up in Romans, right? The night has gone on. And following the night is the dawn. It is still dark now, but we know there will be dawn. That is the good news for us who walk in the darkness. The dawn is coming. Christ is coming. That's what we are reminded of. In today's gospel lesson. All those hopes and dreams that God has placed in your mind, all the things that you kind of could imagine will be fulfilled in that coming. But we don't know when it is. And that means we live our lives today in a certain way. We live our lives ready because we can't wait till the last minute. We will never know what the last minute is. That's what the teaching of Jesus is today in this gospel reading. It's about being ready always because we don't know when it will be. When Jesus tells a story about Noah's Ark, there's no condemnation for those who are sinful and bad, but just emphasis on the fact that no one knew it was going to happen until it happened. They were eating and drinking and doing all the ordinary things of life until the flood came. Be ready, therefore, now. Don't wait till tomorrow. Today is the day to be ready. Two people are working in the field. Two people are working in the kitchen. And it happens just like that. You can't tell from outside for whom the Lord will come. So be ready now. The thief breaks into the house. And if you knew he was coming at quarter to 12, you could set your alarm for 11.30. and be ready to scare him away. But you do not know, so keep awake. Now, of course, you shouldn't have to say it, but not literally awake. But spiritually awake. Ready at all times. So that if Christ were to come through that door now, you would be ready to receive him. Today is the day the Lord has made. It's the only day that we are guaranteed. Make ready in this day. That's the message that Jesus gives in this passage. Sometimes we're reminded of the circumstances of our lives around us that this is the only day that we are guaranteed. Hear it again. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it and be ready for the coming again of Christ. We confess in our creeds week after week, he will come again. Let us be ready to receive the fullness of God's love and God's kingdom. Amen.
the whole church, let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified in Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. When you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and for the life of the world to come. Amen. As we anticipate the fullness of the presence of Christ, we join with the church throughout the world, praying for all who are in need. For the church and its leaders, and for all who work for the unity of the gospel, that the compassion of Christ break down all divisions. And in thanksgiving for the anniversary this week of the baptism of James Rail, Jonathan Maraki, Sarah Maraki, Mark Brady, Bethany Fries Workus, Jackson Elliott, Kathy Severson, Senja Severson, Brandon Rouge, Randy Rouge, Marlene Weber, Phyllis Waples, and Tyler Zim Zilber. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God, for the well-being of creation, for mountains and hills, lakes and rivers, snow and sunshine, plants and animals, and for all who care for the earth, that God raise up stewards to protect this good creation, and in thanksgiving for the birth of, of Zoe. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For peace among nations, for those who lead all levels of government, for judges and magistrates, and for those who speak for the voiceless, that all are treated with equity and fairness. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those who are anxious and worried, for the sick and bereaved, for the homeless and imprisoned, for those in any need, we pray especially for Owen, Geraldine, the family of Pearl, James, Myrna, Terry, Rayanne, Charlene, Susan, Carly, Patty, Linda, Robert, Preston, Steve, Verna, Fern, Nedra, Mary Ellen, Gary, Sandy, Diane, Gloria, Melma, Leroy, Paul, Kathleen, Sandy, Kathy, Michael, Todd, Phyllis, Judy, Elaine, Pearl, Maddie, Gordon, Harvey, Betty, Dorothy, Robin, Paul, Connie. 
and those who name now silently or aloud. That the compassion shown by Christ be embodied in caregivers and advocates. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those who gather for word and sacrament, for those who travel, and for our holiday preparations, that in all our activities we give thanks to the Lord. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. And thanksgiving for those who have died and are at rest that their witness to the gospel serve as examples of living the life of faith. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, those spoken aloud and those known only to you, and grant us peace through Jesus Christ, our coming Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share Christ's peace with our brothers and sisters.
ritual reminders as we prepare for communion. Please fill in the welcome pad if you've not already done so and pass it to those you're seated with as our record of attendance and communion. Um, all baptized Christians are welcome at the Lord's table at St. John Luther Church. We invite you to the table at the appropriate time. We sing our song and receive our offering. Please stand as you're able and let us pray. Savior of the nations, come. Make your home here in us. Feed us with your love, that our faith may shine ever new and our lives reveal your light. In your name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, whom, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. On the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for, the prom for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth and his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Rejoice. Emmanuel shall come to you. Share in the feast of salvation. Thanks be to God. Please be seated.
Aside from our musicians, any others to receive the sacrament? And we've already received the sacrament. Okay. All right. How'd you do that while singing? We're we're good. as you're able and let us pray. God for whom we wait, you come to us in the broken bread and the cup we share. Make us ready always to welcome Christ into our hearts and send us forth to be your people in the world, announcing your coming among us in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated for some brief announcements this morning. Well, I can't guarantee they're brief, but I hope they're brief. Oh. 
while, while people are making their way up, I'll just jump in there. Uh, want to say thank you to the members of St. John who rallied last uh, Sunday and uh, Tuesday and there were some there Wednesday too to help out over at Mount Zion. It was it was beautiful. We had too many volunteers which was great and uh, thank you Heidi for making food for three meals was it? And, and the resource center is officially up and running in the new building as of yesterday, so. Very good. Oh, Excellent. Nice. Good news. Good morning. Um, I'm Lori Craig, for those who don't know me. Um, I'm part of the social ministry organization. And as some of you may have noticed, we have the giving tree up already. We figured the first Sunday in Advent would be a good time to get it started. Um, we made it simple this year, one envelope. It has on here ECHO or World Hunger, ELCA World Hunger. You can check whichever box or both. Um, there's also given by lines, so you can put your name there and an honor or memory of somebody on the envelope as well. Then that information will go on the sheet of paper at Christmas time for um, all the gifts. So if you are willing and or um, able to give an extra donation this year. ECHO and ELCA World Hunger always, always, always needs help. Also, we have back there cards. If you want to send a card to someone saying, I sent money to ECHO and your honor, you can send that card to someone as well. And also we have back there Advent calendars. So if anybody would like an Advent calendar to take home for the season of Advent, there's some on the table back there. Help yourself. Very good. Thank you. It's party time down in Fellowship Hall today, so everybody is more than welcome to join us. Uh, we'll, the children will be making Advent wreaths and Christmas cards, so if you want to help them or even make some yourself, please come down and join us. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. So how many of you have uh, enjoyed over the years uh, the way St. John is decorated at Christmas time? Please raise a hand, huh? Well, you need to thank yourselves because the, 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 the church has been doing that, decorating for many, many years. I talk with my mom. She, uh, she provides the greens and, and, and uh, the training and all of that sort of thing. She's been doing it since uh, maybe mid-60s. And uh, I want to thank you all for helping and helping and helping. <laughs> this year, uh, we do that decorating next Saturday starting at 8 o'clock. We're going to be done at noon. We're going to ask for, for any... How many of you are planning on coming to help us? That is nice, and we really appreciate that. Since I'm not going to be here this year, I haven't told my mom yet. <laughs> um, and I'm taking Randy Roosh with me. <laughs> so uh, we'll, need, we'll need help. And even if you haven't done it before, please come. And, and if, if you can't be here at 8, come at 10 and, and stay as long as you can. The, the, uh, they decorate the yard with the manger scene. They put the trees up. They put the lights on the trees. Uh, we'll need all kinds of help. Um, and it doesn't make any difference whether you've done it before or not. We we'll still need your help. So please, please come and help us next week. And we often have a number of CDs going. So bring your favorite Christmas CD. Pastor Bond won't, won't squelch the Christmas music. Play it up here. You can play it downstairs. You can take a boom box outside if you want, if you're working on that. So bring some music with you. You said to be brief, right? Uh, whatever. <laughs> I'm done with my thing. So now if you're going to be late, it'll be your fault. Darn it. <laughs> okay, I'll be brief. Um, uh, council is going to be looking for four people to replace the four that are going to be getting off this year. So if you are asked to consider being a council member, I hope that you truly do think about that because uh, new faces are great. Uh, good ideas that way. Secondly, uh, next Sunday is First Sunday Feedback, and uh, the council is working and has worked on a budget for next year, and we are trying to put the visitation pastor into that budget. What I would like to hear from 
congregation members next Sunday um, if you truly want a visitation pastor. Um, we may be having difficulty paying for the pastor later on next year. So we would uh, just like to hear um, how people feel about that. So uh, next Sunday I'll be here and uh, I'll have open ears for any suggestions. So that's all. Very Thank good. you. Thank you. Let's see, we've got the addition Saturday at 8 o'clock for Hanging of the Dreams. I think everything else is, is printed there and you can take a look. Please remember the family of Pearl Blood in your prayers this week. Uh, Pearl's funeral is here on Friday. I know many of you worshiped last week and took door hangers with you, but there are a few back on the table yet. So if you weren't here last week, um, or if you know that your neighbors are sleeping in this morning, um, take some more door hangers with you. The idea is you just sneak over to your neighbor's house early in the morning, put it on a doorknob, and no one knows you're there, and they go, oh, someone from St. John Lutheran Church invited me to come worship with them at 9 o'clock on Sunday mornings. Maybe I'll do that. Anyway, there's a few more door hangers back on the table and back. Please take those with you and make good use of them. If you have door hangers at home, tucked in that pile of papers where your bullets went last week, bring them out, take them to your neighbor's door, please. So, all right. Other announcements, other things? Someone's waving, but they're waving to someone else. All right. I invite you to stand as you're able. What? One more. One more. Uh, bring your own nippers. You oh, bring uh, nippers. Nippers next Saturday if you're coming next Saturday. Very good. All right. Please stand. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks.